Breaking new footage released uh, of the Rust movie set. You remember uh, the movie set where Alec Baldwin uh, discharged a weapon and ended up killing his own cinematographer. Um, either of those shirts, I thought he was coming with you, so um, guess not. Um, I'm Alex, I'm a detective on the case. And can I get you coffee or anything? Are you good? Okay. I'll be in here in just a minute, okay? Hi. I'm at the police station of the sheriffs, and they're about to interview me. Um, how is everyone at home? How are the kids? The kids are great. The kids are great. Did you tell, um, did you, hold on a second, please. Did you tell Carmen what's going on? No, I didn't. Okay. Um, are you convinced you don't want to come tomorrow? I mean, I don't think it's a good idea. Look, look, call me after you talk with the sheriff, but, like, I don't think it's a great idea. I think, I think, I think this is, you know. Yeah, but let me, let me just say this to you, just, be clear, just to be clear. They're going to make me stay here tomorrow anyway to talk to okay. my insurance investigators. This is really... I mean, I'll talk to you more, but I'm just saying. I'm so sorry. You must have such, like, you must be so charming. No, no, no. What I am is someone who, I don't want to do this for anymore. I don't. I don't want to be a public person. And, you know, I'm the one holding the gun in my hand that everybody was supposed to have taken care of. They always hand me a cold gun. Where, where are you now? I'm meeting Michelle right now. Michelle who? And where are you? Okay, all right. All right, I'll call you back when I'm done, okay? Hi, Alex. Hey, where are the kids? Kids sleeping. The boys are sleeping. I'm just gonna say, this is, yeah, I'm gonna go. Can you tell you what's going on? Yeah. I'm trying to convince her. I'm trying to convince her to come. Well, I think we should come. They just yeah. spend the time here, and they're going to do what they got to do with the deal, what they got to do with, and we shouldn't let them. We will go out and we'll go. I won't work, and we'll go into her. So it's all paid for, and they're not going to give us the money back. And we we should be staying away from the vultures here. Are they outside? No, but I imagine they will be at some point. They're I think it's a great out. idea. It's a great idea. You should come for that reason also. All right, I'll call Carmen on her iPad, okay? Okay. Yeah, she's on her. She's on her phone. I'm very sorry, actually. Oh, you have no time. idea. You have no idea how unbelievable this is and how strange this is. And I'll That's explain good. to you I'm later. Sorry, you're in this position. No, no, it's just. I hope everyone's okay and that you're okay. Oh, I'll call you back. Thank you. Bye bye. So, in a way, you're here <laughs> uh, for this incident that was unfortunate earlier. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know you already agreed to talk to us and everything, and that's great. Um, we're just going to go over the rights. She's going to read these to you. Um, as you understand them and just sign an initial, and then uh, if you read the bottom and agree to talk to us, it's fine. As you understand them, yes. Yeah, so first one, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say may be used against you in court or other proceedings. You have the right to consult with an attorney before making any statement or answering any questions, and you may have him or her present with you during questioning. You may have an attorney appointed to you to represent you if you cannot afford one or otherwise obtain one. Um, if you decide to answer any questions now with or without a lawyer, you have the right to stop questioning at any time or to stop questioning for the purpose of consulting a lawyer. So my only question is, am I being charged with something? No, we're just yeah. interviewing. I don't know that's why I'm, I'm, I'm not worried because I'm not, yeah. We, we have to do our job at, yeah, no, just tell me that at advising you your right to write because my name this here? is an investigation. Yeah. It's just a formality. You have to no, do I, it. You're here. You we appreciate it. it. What is today? It is the 21st of October. Oh. Long day? Well, 
what's interesting, not to digress on some commentary here, is that we've done this for two weeks and we get it the right way every day. Every day. You're on a set, you rehearse, they bring you what's called a cold gun. The gun is either completely empty, the chambers, or there is a cosmetic piece. So, for example, if you're the camera, and this is going to sound silly and specific, but if I'm pointing a gun close to the camera, you want to see into the cylinder that there's material in there, mm -hmm. cosmetic material. So those rounds are cosmetic rounds. Mm -hmm. They put them in, and you rehearse, mm -hmm. or even in a shot where you don't fire. Mm -hmm. I pull the gun, and you see there's some material inside the cylinder. They'd hand me a cold gun, no charges. They always hand you a cold gun with nothing in it to rehearse. And then <clears throat> when you shoot, and if you were shooting loads that are flash loads, and they're usually in three denominations, quarter, half, or full load round, so that the flash is mm -hmm. bright, and the sound is loud, louder, loudest. Full load is loudest. So if you're outside, you want a full load bang, you want a loud sound. If you're inside, you can do a quarter load. Right before you shoot, everyone preps, crew puts the earplugs in, so put headphones on, the camera's there, very open, there's a loose sight screen, but you're the camera operator and there's the camera, so I should always shoot off camera, you never shoot into the lens, and you shoot and there's a flash and a sound. Now, I went to lunch, she disarmed me, I sat she down, being uh, Hannah, the, the, the armaments person. I, when she was always handling the guns, 99% of the time. So I would, uh, if I had a cosmetic rifle with no rounds, I'd probably hand it to one of her assistants. I'm sitting there, she disarms me, we go to lunch, we come back from lunch, and they hand me the, the revolver, the, the Colt. And they, I just like the name, it's hand Hannah again. They, they arm me, mm -hmm. and you're assuming, as we've done every time, that it's a cold gun for the rehearsal. And I put the, the, the gag in the shot, you were the camera, because I have a coat, and I have a holster, and I pull the coat over, and I kind of cut my hands like I folded my hands. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to slowly sneak the revolver, the, the Colt, out and turn and shoot the other guys or try to shoot them. I take the coat over the vein, and the camera's there. I believe, my recollection is she was there, turned a bit, like talking to him. So her, I think she was hitting the right armpit. But this is all I know, and that is that I take the gun out in the rehearsal, Really, he wants it very dramatic and very slow. I'm trying to sneak up on them. I take the gun out, and as I take, like as it clears, as the barrel clears, the whole turn and cock the gun over here. I turn and cock the gun. The gun goes off. Okay. It's supposed to be a cold gun. Nothing, no flash charges. Nothing. Now, this is a puzzle to me. This is making me very emotional now. You know, but in my time, and I'm older now. But when I was younger and I was shooting guns and stuff, I've never seen a theatrical flash round where the material went through someone's armpit, came out their body, and hit somebody else in the shoulder. Yeah. I'm wondering if your department is prepared to go find out what comes out of his shoulder surgically. Is that a live round? That's what we are actually looking is at. Is that a lot? Because I don't, does it make any sense otherwise? Really? Yeah. It's her in the armpit, comes out her shoulder, goes into his shoulder, and he just told me on the phone, I talked to Joel. He said, they showed me the x-ray, and the shape of the thing in my shoulder is the shape of a bullet. Now, all the rounds I was told, you need to verify that this is an important note, they take the gun, they enter the and all the rounds that are in there were either dummy rounds, no flash, cold rounds, or rounds with a flash. In the rehearsal, there should have been nothing. It should have been a cold gun with no rounds inside or dummy rounds, cosmetic rounds, no flash. I take the gun out slowly, I turn, I cock the pistol, bang, it goes up, she hits the ground, she goes down. He goes down, screaming. He says, Jesus Christ, and I'm going. And I thought that maybe sometimes the wadding can come out if you're closer to get a burn. Two actors who killed themselves with guns, with theatrical guns, John Eric Hexen and Brandon Lee, they put the live round in, and I'm told even with the flash powder, you can cause contusions and you can do a brain, brain bleed and die, which both of them died. Right. I think with Brandon Lee, there was a, 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 a piece of material lodged in the thing that shot from the or something. Yeah. I don't remember vividly, but my point is, I've been doing this, I, I shot enough guns in my day in movies, I've never seen this before. Or a flash round, but from my understanding is, can I borrow your pen for a My My understanding is that in a, in a, in a bullet, you know, here's the thing with the pin, and here's the, the, the bullet itself. And now here, when you have a cosmetic round, no flash, no nothing, they drill a hole 
in the side of the brass to show, to signify that it's a cosmetic brown. There's nothing in there. There's no powder. And when, but when you have a when you have a flash round, and you have to, and there's and there's stuff in there, wadding and powder to make the charge. This material here, that is the bullet, is made of a clay or some material that just disintegrates. So what you have is bang, and you see the flash go bang, and you get a sound, but nothing. There's no projectile. Mm -hmm. And what I'm curious about is what came out of that bullet that went through her body and into his shoulder. That's pretty powerful. I, 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 I've never heard of it. Now, some people say. <coughs> You can lodge material in the barrel accidentally, a rock, something, that happens. Which is why she, every time we've done this, I'm here to tell you, to testify that every time we've done this, she's done it right. She cleaned the barrel, made sure nothing was lodged in there. We went hot when they were ready. You always announced, going hot. Crew gets ready. And then all of a sudden, you're the camera, and I shoot away from you. I sit down like, bang, 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 and flashes are coming out. We shoot the rounds. She cleans the barrel. Every time, because she checks that the, the rounds are all cosmetic rounds, or nothing in the chamber for the rehearsal. She hands me the gun. I'm assuming she's done it the right way. She's done it the last two weeks. I put it in the holster. I pull it out slow. We're rehearsing. We're not filming anything. I pull it out slow, turn, cock the pistol, bang, it goes up, and she hits the ground. And then he starts screaming. And I'm thinking, in a flash round, I could see maybe if there was wadding or there's some stuff that, that's hot, and maybe it hits you and burns you. And then, as they say, sometimes that happens. But remember, we're rehearsing, so no one's protected. So it's all supposed to be this one, cosmetic one. Or, or nothing. Or nothing. For the rehearsal, the gun is normally empty. Mm. But my point is, is that they were standing in positions they wouldn't ordinarily be in because they assumed it was an empty, cold gun. We weren't shooting. We were rehearsing. That's a vital difference. So if she's here, if the camera's here, and she's standing here talking to the guy, and I'm on a bench here, and Joel's behind her, and this guy is not proportionate because they're, they're obviously the camera's not as big as her body, but I draw the gun slowly and aim off camera, and there's supposed to be nothing in there. So she's not protecting herself and standing off. I'm shooting in a direction, and everybody is supposed to be to that side of the camera. There's nobody in my line. Nobody. And so when I shoot the gun, so in the rehearsal, I'm assuming I have an empty gun, and the gun goes off. She's right in front of me. Mm -hmm. She's as far from me as I am from between the difference between maybe you and the door. Okay. So pretty close proximity. Well, she's very, it was a very tight shot. Okay. The shot was here. Of me, not of me. It's of me pulling the gun slowly, slowly, turn cock. Okay. And she's right there, vulnerable, in a position she wouldn't ordinarily be if we were shooting, and, she, and this thing... Boom, yes. she hits the ground. Okay. All right, I'm going to back you up just a little bit, yeah. okay? Yeah. How long have you been on set? I arrived uh, Monday the 11th. Okay. I started my fittings, and my, they were, already, were shooting the week before. And the 11th of October? Monday the 11th, I flew in from New York. I flew from New York to Denver, Denver to Albuquerque, because there's no direct flights here, and then drove from Albuquerque to here, okay. rehearsed and fitted, and did all my preparatory stuff. But so that was in October, correct? That was Tuesday the 12th, yeah. I flew on the 11th, rehearsed on the 12th, started shooting the 13th, Wednesday the 13th, that's what shoot. Okay. We shoot a Wednesday through Sunday schedule. We're all Monday, Tuesday. Hmm. So the entire time you've been on set, have you seen the same armor... And her crew, yeah, everybody. How many people are on her crew? Uh, my guess is that what I witness is three. Okay. All young women. Hannah and two other women. All right. And very often their task with me, because we're not shooting every day, guns, we're not, there's no armaments every day, they dress me with my holster, my knife. We're, the, the film is set in 1888, so I'm armed with the classic weaponry of the cowboy era. Okay. And so they would make sure I was dressed properly. You know, 80, 85% of their task is to make sure I'm dressed with everything properly. The armors? The armors. Or well, the armorers, wardrobe doesn't necessarily, they sometimes trade back and forth, but wardrobe doesn't necessarily deal with my holster. Okay. And, and the knife, that's a prop. The armorer, Hannah, and her team, they dealt with me being knifed and that being lashed properly so it looks proper. Okay. And the uh, holster. Okay. And so it was wardrobe as much as it was props, as much as it was armaments. Okay. Do you know Hannah's last name? No. Do you know what she looks like? Or can 
Yeah, uh, multicolored hair, glasses, uh, you know, uh, not too tall. Everyone knows her pretty well because her father is a very famous armaments guy. He's a guy that did guns in movies for decades. He's very well known. Okay. She's the daughter of this famous gun guy, movie gun guy. And what about the other girls in her crew? I don't remember their names. Okay. Do you know what they look like? A blonde, thin, not too short, and like a medium height, and brunette, someone on the shorter side, maybe the same height as Hannah, brunette, and uh, and also there's a there's you go back and forth between they're wearing a mask most of the time on set. They've right. been ordered to do that, but I've seen them with their mask off. Okay. All right. What time did you guys start today? I don't know what time they started. I came in slightly later because they had a couple of shots without me in the morning, so I came in at uh, I guess I arrived there at like about. Quarter to eight. Okay. Normally I'm there at like 6.30. All right. And then anything abnormal in the day? Who handed, or should I say, who handed you your weapon in the day? Handed. Handed it. Okay. And physically handed or put it in the holster? Handed it to me. Okay. She would show me the gun. Okay. Or she'd say, cold, a cold gun. She'd say, test it or some language to indicate she handed me the gun. Then it was fine. And she said, do you want to check? Okay. And I always didn't want to insult her. I said, because we never had a problem. Yeah. I said, oh, I'm good. So, and the first AD very often will ask periodically. He'll say, let me check. Okay. And they'll have two people check for this very reason that we don't have any flat, forget about live rounds of bullets, that we have any flash rounds in the gun while we're rehearsing. Because if someone wants to indicate, and they're not kind of thinking, they pull the trigger on the gun, you just hear the hammer, the, 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 the dead sound of the hammer hitting, and, and you have no flash rounds at all in there for the rehearsal. The, the, re, the rehearsal of guns should be empty. Okay. And, 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 and as I said, for the two weeks I've been shooting, it has been empty. We haven't had one problem. And you ha have you physically checked that or just by... She announces right? to me that it's, that's, that it's clean. Okay. So say, cold gun, we rehearse. Then when she's done, she takes the gun, goes off to a corner. She has a kit, like a zip fanny pack with her uh, uh, elements in there. She puts the flash rounds in there. She'll say... You know, uh, uh, quarter load, but you know, it's, it's, a, it's a lower sound. Or she'll say full load. And if I'm shooting, if you're the crew and you're shooting me close, the minute I say the full load, it is rather loud. It's very loud. Okay. So she's always announcing what's going to happen. All right. And she's been very good about that. So have you guys, backtracking a little bit on this, um, you know, because she's telling you what's in these guns. Um, have you guys been practicing with those quarter loads, the full loads, all that through the past couple weeks? Or have you shot with them? I came in on Tuesday. That's what I did Tuesday, okay. the 12th. I came to the ranch, rode the horse. I just got used to that. And uh, they have a double who really rides in the distance up really fast. And all the athleticism you see in the armor horse, and they come to a watch it. Another guy riding was a real horse. Okay. We have quite a crew of them. So today was not the first day that. No, I shot okay. on Tuesday the 12th with the uh, uh, the uh, Henry, the, the, the lever, uh, you know, arm action lever, uh, the lever action rifle, okay. and the pistol. I just shot both. Okay. And, all right, moving back forward. What time did you guys break for lunch today? Usually, I think today was probably 1230. Okay. And who took the weapon at that time? Hannah. Physically took it? Always knows. You. Rarely do the other ladies, the two other women, handle the pistol that we're, that's live shooting in the scene. As I said, I have the Henry in my hand as a prop. I'd be running through the scene, but no, no bullets, nothing. When they say cut, I could hand it to the blonde girl. Okay. okay. But whenever we were interacting with somebody where rounds were going to go in the gun, you would have flash rounds in the scene. We shot flash rounds. It was only him. Okay. Only. With her fanny pack with the rounds in there, her equipment. Um, do you know what time you guys got back from lunch? I guess it's 1.30 by the time we all get back to the set up. Uh, there's a base camp, and there's the set. Mm -hmm. So we go to the base camp for lunch, and they always just drive back, get their wardrobe touched up, get their hair touched up, and make up whatever we do, and then we're on set. We'll put about an hour before we go back on the set. Okay. And was Hannah the one to physically hand you the gun at yes. point? Yes. Okay. Um... During the time that you had it, was it ever handed off to anybody else? No. Okay. Did 
Did you see where she got the gun from? No. Um, she has a station somewhere with all her stuff. Okay. Uh, the hell of that's a gun, a c- couple different guns. Guns for the other actresses. So she has a holding gun. Is anybody else allowed in that area? I don't know, but I know that on the, I, I've never seen anything that was out of the ordinary. She had like a, sometimes they have a, a cart, like almost like a, there's like a hospital catering, and I'm like, like a big plastic tray, a dark plastic tray, two levels of wheels. Um, I think that's what she had, but many of the departments have that, and uh, on that tray would be her, or something like that. I don't recall what exactly hers was, but they have a station that they bring to the set okay. for her to put all of her stuff. And uh, uh, if the weather is cooperative, and sometimes they put it under a tent if it's sort of by rain and rain and damage the property. But uh, she has a little place she would go to, and then he says a truck where she stores it. When, when they wrap it, it goes into a truck and she takes off with it. It's her responsibility to to uh, secure. The prop weapons. Everything in there. Which are real guns. They're real guns. Um, can you actually describe the gun to me? Uh, it's a Colt, a period Colt. Uh, in our emails back and forth when we were prepping the film, she showed me just a couple different styles of guns. This is not a big budget movie, so we didn't have a lot of choices. You know, you, 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 she showed you three or four choices. I said, give me the biggest gun you've got. Okay. And, uh, uh, and so I didn't, uh, she showed me different guns. Uh, by email and different knives by email, uh, cruder knives that were made for, for like someone fashioned the handle out of like L corn or things. And I took a traditional knife, a leather strap, a handle. Um, we went back and forth about the holster and the material, and uh, we just had a, a relatively brief conversation. I, I'm having made a lot of movies. I know how not to stress them out about the budget. When she shows me something, I try to make that work. And so uh, she showed me. I said, "Just give me the big Colt. We were done." And then on that Tuesday, the 12th, I came and shot that gun. Okay. What color is it? Uh, I believe it's a brown handle because she showed me two of the larger coats. One had a cherry colored handle and one had a brown handle. And I chose the brown handle. You didn't want the cherry. I could show you my emails. And my <laughs> I didn't want the cherry. It was too shiny. Ah, okay. My character is a little bit in the retirement side of his career. So. Ah. He's a retired bank robber. I'd be out in the Wild West. You need the gun to match. <laughs> well, you always have people in films. I mean, they go to an extensive extent. You wouldn't believe some films if they have the budget, the details you go into. Of all the things you wear, jewelry, hats, watches, guns, cars. I mean, just people sit down. I mean, I've made a lot of films, and the films that had bigger budgets, you could spend a whole week going to rehearsal, reading with the director. The writer goes and rewrites. They listen to how the dialogue sounds. And then once you're done rehearsing the text, with the director, the producers, and the writer. When you're done reading, they'll go make amendments. So when they hear it come out of your mouth, they go, let's change that line. The way Bob says that, and then they go, they go, and you go right to wardrobe, props. You go do a lot of stuff. Okay. All right, so you get back from lunch, get ready. She hands you the gun. Um, was this inside or outside? We're inside the church, the church okay. set. And was it the first rehearsal that the incident happened? Yeah, I believe so, because we talked about, as we were going to lunch, we're always talking about what's next. So as we were rehearsing scenes, he said, now I want to do a scene where uh, we've done other shots before lunch. He said, when we come back from lunch, we'll do this. And he said, I want you to pull out, show me. Because I was showing you what I thought was the best angle, to see the glint of the gun under my coat. Because you want the scene to work, the shot to work. So where are the holsters here? If the gun is here, my coat comes around. And I held my hand like it was like I was just cupping my hands, like I was just resting. Okay. And I showed him in the rehearsal. So when we came back after lunch, we rehearsed for the camera. And I took the gun. I really was showing him. I'm going, I'm going to go like this, like this, like this. Cock and turn. Bang, it went off. The first time. Okay. So it was, it was your first It was the very time first time that we were shooting that shot, that we were rehearsing for that shot. Okay. That camera shot. Um, and you may, if you don't know this, <clears throat> did you happen to see? So obviously you guys left from that upper, your upper shooting area, to go have lunch, or did you eat lunch up there? No, we always go back to the base camp for lunch. Okay. For the stage. Yeah, did the, the armors, or did you see the armors go down? No. No. Nor would I. Okay. Yeah. Well, once they're gone, I'm gone. Okay. okay. And people gone. stay up on set. Or did everybody go down? Well, there are many people who will forego lunch okay. 
I mean, I think that back, not many. There are some who will forego lunch because they have work to do. Okay. Some will hold them a plate. Some will they'll bring their own lunch. They just, many people, they, uh, um, they make sacrifices because of their pride for their department. Mm -hmm. They may sit there and say, I think I need to paint that wall and touch up that wall. I think I need to distress those boots. They all have work to do. And very often, a small number of people will stay up top while we drive down from the set to the base camp. The caterer is there in need, but maybe a modest number of people stay up there. Okay. All right. And then I just want to clarify, really, um, I know you're drawing something. All right. So when you had pulled out the gun, obviously you were not at the cameraman, but you had identified there were two people there. Can you tell me who those people were? My recollection is that the operator was there. He's a steady cam operator. Okay. He's a man who is either a camera on sticks that's stationary, okay. or there's a man who operates the steady cam that moves. The camera operator was there behind the camera, and she was to his right. And who is she? That's what I'm going to Kalina, the, the cinematographer. Okay. The camera director. And she was right next to the cameraman. She was to his right, to my left. And who was behind her? Joel. And he is? The director of the movie. Can you recall who exactly was inside at the time no. of the incident? Uh, or uh, anyone Dave, else? Dave Halls, okay. the first AD. He's in charge of the crew. The first assistant director is the man who's like the foreman of the set. He's in charge of all the grips, all the, all the crew. Okay. Electric, cable. Do you know his name? Dave, Wall, Dave Halls. Okay, let's see. Okay. Uh, Dave Halls is al always there. Uh, uh, Helena, Joel, me, the operator, an assistant camera person, the script supervisor, a woman who sits in the corner in some strategic position to take notes on all the action of the take so you can match. If one day you're doing a scene, you sit there and go, what is your first name? Samantha. So they're like, Samantha, you know, it's really important that you and I uh, drink, drink, drink. Uh, get together and talk about that case. You drank, when did you, she makes notes, so we match every take. That's called continuity. That woman who does continuity, she's always there watching. She was in the room. Okay. She's an older woman, like in her 60s, maybe with, um, um, you know, that colored blonde hair, maybe, or brown hair. But she, I forget her name now, but she is, so there's a group of people that are always there for every shot, even if you're in a kind of a cramped interior. This set of this church is not large, so then the rest of the crew is outside. And that's why it was a limited number of people, maybe eight. I don't remember. But I, I know that every time I do a shot, those people are always on the set. Camera, assistant camera, cinematographer, director, first AD, script. Okay. So not too many. Very few. Do you think that any part of this incident that occurred was intentional? Well, I, I can only say this, which is, in, in other words, to me, to place a bullet and position a bullet that is a live round, to make sure that that bullet is in the chamber, if I were to squeeze the trigger in a rehearsal, that that bullet came out, someone has to have extraordinary access to that weaponry to do that. I can't imagine somebody walked around with a round that was a 45 caliber round. So you see other people on the set were speculating that if it was a 45 caliber round, she'd be dead. It would have blown a big hole in her. And so we're wondering, was the projectile that went in or some foreign material stuck and it was an accident, it was a flash round, and something came out of the barrel. They didn't check. They always check. But... But to your experience with these armor... I've never heard of anything like this in my life, ever. Okay. I've never heard of a projectile coming out of a prop gun that went through a person's body, regardless of her being a smaller woman. That, a, that the bullet went in here, I'm told, went in here, came out here, her shoulder or whatever, and went into his body and buried. I've never heard of that in my life. I don't know of any projectile with a gun in a flash prop gun that could accomplish that. Now, if somebody put a live round in there accidentally, see, a very important question for Hannah is, do, have you ever commingled live rounds with theatrical rounds in your kit? Because they're forbidden to do that. According to the, I think the union rules and the safety rules for all the unions, you're not allowed to do that because of the fear of what will happen that you commingle. So, whether someone accidentally, 
and I can't even imagine this, deliberately placed a live round in that gun. Uh, I mean, I've never, never heard of that in my life. And I, I don't know anything about what happened, but all I know is when I... See, see, the other thing about this is, in a live round, you have a recoil, usually. When I shot that gun and it went off, I didn't shoot it when it went off. Um, I didn't intend for it to, 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 for what happened to happen. When that happened is, it, it, I've always told them, because I'm not a gun person, I don't have a gun. They've always told me, they asked me to simulate the recoil. When I shoot the Colt, which is a big gun, 45 caliber bullet, they always teach me when we should be go action. I go, get back here, boom, and they make me take my hand and go, boom, and have the kick. Because mm -hmm. there's no kick in a flash round. Okay. And when I, this happened, I don't recall there being any kick either. That's important. Okay. Are you, ex I know you said you don't own a gun, but are you experienced with shooting guns? Only as much as actors have to be experienced. Okay. Which is normally not. Really well, I mean, if you, you do a movie, safety with weapons is, is primary. You go off with people. You go off with armaments people to ranges. I've gone to ranges in Arizona where we shot a lot of guns in a movie many years ago, and uh, you go to a range and you shoot for a few hours, and they teach you how to shoot shotguns, uh, uh, Walther, uh, uh, different you know little small guns, uh, James Bond guns, big guns, Uzis, machine guns, whatever you're using, they make you go and rehearse for hours, like a whole day. Okay. Yeah, well, they're very safety conscious, and as they have been here. They've been very safety conscious here throughout. That's what puzzles me. Well, and like, yeah, and I guess that's more like the question that I'm trying to get out is you, do you think someone would deliberately do this? I can't imagine who would. Okay. Now, people have said, you know, that six people got fired from the crew yesterday because they said that the, you know, the union, I don't want to give them a long diatribe about this, but the union, the International Association of Theatrical Stage Employees, IATSE is their name, IATSE is the union that controls all the actors. The Directors Guild control the director, the Screen Actors Guild, but all of the crew are controlled by a contract in which those people voted to go on strike against the major studios, the major networks, the major streaming services, but not the independent film community. In fact, the IATSE rep for the New Mexico contract, because every state has different contracts, was instructed by his bosses in LA, he said, don't go on strike. The strike is against the majors, not against the indie people. And in the indie films, there's six different tiers, I believe, in terms of the contract, how much they're paid. Mm -hmm. A bunch of people on the set walked off anyway, even though they were told not to, to, to strike. They, they struck and they left. And that was yesterday. That was yesterday. That was their last day. And yeah, the question yeah, becomes, yeah. I mean, somebody said, would, would one of them do? I, I, don't, I don't even know. I, I have no idea. I have no idea. Well, and I was because that was mentioned to me, is that it sounded like it was most of the camera crew that walked off set yes. um, yesterday and quit, and maybe it, they got fired because they walked off. Um, so the other thing is that the two major people, like you said, the director, um, those are the ones who got hurt. So with the camera crew and them quitting, and then your director getting injured, as well as um, Helena, as you don't think there's anybody that had any anger towards them or anything that would want to I don't know the details. I know that one guy, whose name I'm forgetting, he was a very heavy set guy. Okay. He was a very, and lovely to me. And he walked up to me and he said, thank you for the things you posted on social media in support of the IATSE strike. And he said, I'd like to talk to you privately. Because, he said, because I've got some of my guys sleeping in their car. Mm -hmm. Many of the crew here, because they're shooting in Albuquerque and Santa Fe, or Albuquerque based, they live there. So the drive time uh, is kind of common knowledge in the business that the uh, the unions in New Mexico signed very bad deals in order to attract the movie shooting here. They wanted to grow the, the, the crew uh, uh, base here. So they signed the deal that wasn't a good deal and that gave them a 60 mile commute radius. So that means if you live within 60 miles of the set, mm -hmm. you come to work and you don't get paid any, you have to drive home and they don't hotel you. They don't know in New York it's 30 miles and they have to put you up in a hotel and give you gas money and there's a whole other complicated contract. In the, in the more um, expensive markets. Here, this guy was telling me, he turned to me and goes, my guys are sleeping in their car. Now, I went to the AD and the producers and I asked him, what's up with that? He said, they knew what the contract was. We signed the IATSE contract in New Mexico. And then in the middle of shooting, they decided they wanted to rewrite their deal. They said, put us up in hotels. 
Now, if you put the camera crew up in a hotel, all the other crafts are going to ask you to put them in a hotel. We don't have the budget for that. Mm. That could be seventy-five, eighty thousand dollars know dollars I mean? Who is that man? Who? Do you, the one you said that could I forget, like I said, I forget his name. Okay. But anybody there can tell you who the big heavy set guy was who was on the crew that quit yesterday. He didn't come to work today. Okay. But my point is, is that if I'm standing there in a rehearsal, mm-hmm. I'm thinking to myself, could someone actually believe that in a rehearsal I would actually aim the gun and hit those two people? That's far-fetched. Or do they want just somebody to get hit? Or, I keep telling myself more likely, was it an accident? But it was a large quarter load is, makes noise, but it's like kind of a puff compared. But a half load could shoot a projectile if something was stuck in the barrel. And like I said, the thing that is, I think, going to answer all your questions is, what's in Joel's shoulder? Mm-hmm. Is it a rock or is it a bullet? Uh, I could actually show that to you. What? What was in his shoulder. We did so they take it out? So you've been on set for so many years, like you said. You Have you ever seen, you, you said you've never seen anything come out before. I've so never seen, you, no, I've never seen a projectile come out. No. Right. No. So, but so, do you know what the bullets look like? Though? Would it have looked something like this if anything did ever come out of something? Okay. No, 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 okay. So, let's okay, backtrack a little bit. Let me say this to you. Hold that's on. a bullet. <laughs> that's a bullet. So right. As I suspected, somebody put a live round in the gun. If that's a bullet that was pulled out of his shoulder, then someone loaded a live round into the gun I was holding. So now, let me ask you, did you see the rounds that were in the gun? No. Have you seen, throughout the whole time on set, have you seen what they look like? I've watched her load and reload the gun many times, many times. Have you seen the bullets themselves? Well, meaning yes, meaning you see um, sometimes the head, it's the casing, and the head is a pinched, it almost looks like a dumpling. Mm -hmm. It's closed at the top. There is no piece. And you put the cosmetic round in, when you know you're going to see. If I hold the gun, if I say to you, what is your first name again? Alex. If I say to you, Alex, don't you move a muscle, darling, I'm going to blow you. The camera shoots me. You want to see the material in the cylinder, the cosmetic clay-based non-bullet round. So can you describe to me what those clay-based rounds look like? They look like a bullet. What colors? They're, they're, they're gray. They look exactly like a bullet. Brass head and have a brass base packed with something, I'm assuming, and, the, uh, um, and then the, uh, the head look like a bullet. So cosmetically, you see that in the cylinder. The other rounds you shoot have a, it's the, it's the base with the pin. This comes up, this comes up, and it's a round like this. And if you look at the top, if you're looking down at the bullet, with the, with the, with the, uh, not the pin down here, the top of it, you look at, it's folded in like a, like, almost like a... Yeah, it's like, like a... a yeah, they're like a dumpling. Like a pinch. It's like a, exactly, it's like a folded up thing in the chart, and all that does is go, boom. So if, I no showed, <laughs> if I showed you a couple rounds, would you be able to tell me if they're the ones that look like they were on set? Uh, probably. If the, if, I, I think I could probably tell you which were the rounds that were put in cosmetic. Okay. And which were the rounds that were the flash rounds. All right. Now, forgive me because I'm very upset right now. I know. But I you know what I'm saying? So please take, don't forgive my, my, my weirdness about this. That's what came out of Joel's shoulder. Yes. Yes. And the reason why I was showing you because you said you have experience. But you're saying when this does come out, it's supposed to just tough and well, not well, really be well, usually, a hard object. If there's any chance, if there's any chance that when you look at the gun, so here's the barrel, here's the sight. And the cylinder's around and it has the holes. Mm-hmm. We're just looking at the gun, the camera's eye view. Yeah. When you look at the, the cosmetic rounds go in, they have no flash. But if you want to have cosmetic rounds that flash, if you want me to hold the gun, you see the bolts, and I shoot, that material is often a clay or you know, fabricated material that just disintegrates, mm-hmm. just turns to powder. And, so, and, and the and rounds that you put that you don't see, you're not seeing down the barrel, you shoot, those are the flash rounds. Which have the top that looks like it's like like folded kind of things like this, where it's all kind of, it looks like something's packed in and closed. But specifically today was supposed to be either empty or the ones that don't even make anything. Cold rounds. So cold rounds, the one with the hole in it. Yes. 
and it's not going to, it's not supposed to puff up or powder off, like you said. Well, Charles told me that when he checked the rounds with her, they were all, had the holes in them. Oh, and, and, some, and, and sometimes, he told, and when I wasn't familiar with this, they'll take the round, and if it's a cold round, it'll have the holes, on, and inside will be BBs, and you shake it. Yeah. When you shake the PB, it's an acoustic thing to tell you that's a cold round. Okay. And, yeah, that's so, and that's what... Inside this base is stuff that rattles, little BBs that rattles. So you take it, you go, that's a cold round. That goes in the gun. Okay. And that's what you were supposed to have today. I was supposed to have an empty gun. Empty? Or when we shot, for the rehearsal, empty. Mm -hmm. And then when we shot, the flash rounds and everybody preps. And then she says, hot gun. She announces it, and the crew gets ready. But that... That didn't, that, you didn't even get to that part. I rehearsed today. with a hot gun. Now. But you were supposed to be cold. And it been, well, it was supposed to be cold or empty, but now, not only did I rehearse with a hot gun, I rehearsed with a gun that had a bullet inside. If that's what came out of your show, this is the most horrifying thing I've ever heard in my life. Well, so, yeah, and that's why I wanted to make sure that you, any time that you've shot a hot gun, um, You've never seen anything like this come out before. Never. Because I'm not familiar with prop guns. Never. I can tell you what a projectile looks like, and that does look like a projectile. That's a bullet. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, so that's what comes out of... Well, I think the question, bullet. I mean, I don't want to tell you your job, mm -hmm. but I'm so sick about this, so sickened by this, that a bullet passed through this girl's body. She's in critical condition in a hospital right now, and I fired the gun. And you, if you don't think I feel really, really shitty about that, I do. But the question becomes, if you ask Hannah, did you commingle live bullets? What they, what they call live rounds. When they say live round, that's a bullet that a police officer would shoot. Mm -hmm. Where did that come from yeah. in her kit? Yeah. Um, she commingled live rounds with dummy rounds or movie rounds. And we asked her. We asked her that. Uh, do you know where you guys get the rounds from who orders it or you don't have any part of any of that who me yeah like, no, no, uh, just her, yeah. all familiar okay well, what i know is when we come to the set you hand me a, a cold gun nothing's in reverse then we load the gun with the flash rounds and we shoot that's it every time we never had a problem oh uh, you didn't even get part to that second part of you'll hand it back i do want to ask you about Dave Holt. Um, I understand sometimes she'll hand the gun off to Dave Holt and then he'll hand it to you. Did that happen at this incident? No. No. It, I was recall doing. it was Hannah handing I never recall. I recall that when we would stop the scene, if we finish the scene, Halls is someone who is assumed by his position to be authorized to do nearly everything. Mm -hmm. So if I was doing a scene with you and we finished the scene, we finished your angle, and we were going to turn around and shoot my angle. We, we used, when they say turning around, that means it's time to go to the bathroom, go get a bottle of water, go get a coffee, go smoke a cigarette. We have a break. And if I was going to go to the bathroom, I'd hand Halls the gun to give to her. I would only hand it to her. Or if she wasn't around, if she was if she was awake, she'd be at the shop. They clearly hand Halls the gun to give it to her. Give this to, to, to uh, Hannah. So sometimes you would hand the gun to Halls. But you never, um, she, he never handed the gun to you. No. Okay. No, no. But you would hand it to him. I'd pass it off to him if she was not on site and I was going to want to use the bathroom. I'm going to buy it. That's very typical. Halls is empowered and authorized to, to hand him the weapon. He's the only other person to hand the weapon after we were done. After we were done. Whether it was a cold gun with no things or flash rounds, I'd say. Hot gun, I hand it to him. Well, usually not. Because usually it was, it, was it was a hot gun. If it was a hot gun, we were going to shoot Chibi right nearby. Okay. If I hit, because other times we have rubber guns. You know, think, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, specifically, sorry, right before this incident, Hannah handed you the gun and said, "Cold." It wasn't Dave. I don't mean cold. No, Hannah handed me the gun. Okay. It wasn't anybody else but Hannah. No, Hannah handed me the gun. And she specifically said. I, I believe she said cold. I don't be cold. Yeah. Where? So this is my, I'm not that great of a drawer, but this is the church. This is the front where the, the yeah, you enter here. Yeah. Church, uh, cross, the cross is. Where did she hand it? The gun to you inside? Why were oh, yes, you I was in, in other words, I was. 
this is a scene in the church where you come in and there's a lot of disarray. There's benches tipped over and they're like, and here was one bench that was upright and sturdy. Some of the other benches are prop benches so they can smash easily with, with uh, explosives. You want the gunfire to have uh, um, fake benches that are made of a lighter wood so they put charges inside. So when you shoot, the, uh, cinematically, when a guy's shooting a gun, you turn around and see what he's shooting at, you're going to see charges that are buried inside. They put a little material around, you're going to see, boom, 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 it seems flash. That is a prop bench. There were prop benches around that they were eventually going to put, today, we're going to put squibs in to have them blow up. And this was a real bench, a heavy, because if you sat on the prop bench, it would break. Mm -hmm. This was a live bench, and I sat here, and the camera was here, and she was here, and Joel was here. She being Helena? Helena. Okay. And I'm here on the bench sitting. I'm right here to the right. I'm all, all, all the way to one side. They wanted me to go all the way to that side. And the camera guy was here. He's behind. Hannah was here. Joel was here. Where well, the other people, I believe that the problem, the, the script woman is always in that corner. So she can see the actual. And when I shot the gun away from the cameraman, I always never aimed against the camera. I turned and I went like this to stay in the camera. And she was there and the gun went off and she just went right on the ground. What about the armorer though? Or was she? She's outside. Okay. She hands me a gun. In. She hands me the gun all the time. And then what if there's any shooting involved in the scene, she always hands me the gun. Never has Dave handed you the gun? Never. Okay. And then she goes back outside. She waits outside because she just can't be there. So she doesn't want to see. Sometimes in the scene, there's reflections like, you know, you're using. Okay. So she, so you only need the necessary crew in there for shooting the camera. Everybody else leaves. And as soon as they, they cut, they come running back in. Okay. Real quick before she shows you that. The other thing I wanted to know, and it's probably helping how she does show you those rounds. Um, have you, in your experience, ever been told that you're not supposed to cock the gun? No. No. You're, you're okay. He wanted, to, he you're wanted me to cock the gun okay. at the scene. Okay. He wanted that as part of the scene. So we have to take the gun out, turn, and cock it into the, to the, to the right, my left, to their right of the lens. In other words, if I'm sitting here and you're the camera, we don't talk about my left. We talk about camera right. Camera right. We only talk about the camera. Camera right is my left. Okay. So if I'll say to you, where do you want me to aim the gun? They'll say, camera right. So I'll aim the gun to my left. Okay. So I always aim the gun away, but she was there. And in the rehearsal, he wanted me to pull out the gun and cock the gun. And if you're assuming you have a cold gun, there's no problem. Right. And again, a cold gun I'd had, every time we've used guns in this film, the last two weeks, we never had one problem. Never. Never. And I don't, maybe we discuss this when I was going. Um, after the gun was shot, who did you hand the gun to? I don't remember. Okay. I don't remember. I made everybody freaked out. Yeah. I think so. Okay. It was one of those two people, Halls. Or... Okay. I don't really know. I would imagine. Well, there's the dummy there. So that's probably a dummy right and there's no drill in this. That might be uh, a flash round. And as I said, so very, flash rounds do not have holes. Well, you, the flash round has a charge in here okay. of powder, different sizes. Like I said, quarter half full load, and a wadding in there to pack it in. It's packed in tightly. Okay. So when you hit this pin, it explodes. Now, sometimes it has this material there. If you have to have the cosmetic feature through the gun and then shoot, but often it has. There's the BBs in there. This is a this is a dummy round. No dummy here, but there's that. My point is that very often when you give me when she's loaded the gun with rounds for us to go hot and flash and shoot, they've had that creased folded head, mm -hmm. the dumpling head, as we say. Okay. They've almost never looked like this for the flash. Only when the camera sees inside the cylinder do you put those in there. But those are both dummy rounds. That's a dummy Pierre. round. That's a dummy round. That's what they taught me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not an expert. I am 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 not an exp
I'm 63 years old, and I have an eight-year-old, a six-year-old, a five-year-old, a three-year-old, a one-year-old, and an eight-month-old who we had as a surrogate. Oh, my, my gosh. I'm okay. 63 years old, and we had, seven, we had six kids in seven years. So my wife is always, she was born in the U.S., but raised in Spain. She's like, I like we will not be having any guns in the house. No, no, no. <laughs> but <coughs> okay. I believe that's a two, uh, uh, dummy round. So you call this a flash round, right? No. Flash round means there's, there's a charge in there. No charge in there, if you hear that sound. Okay. No charge in there if you see that. So what happens so when you shoot told. these? Or to what you? You put them in there cosmetically with nothing in them so that through the cylinder you can see that. Okay. You can see in the cylinder whether the cylinder is empty or they look bad, continuity wise, or whether there's a round in there. So they put a cosmetic round in the chamber. They load the gun, close it, and then I hold the gun. You see the things in there. A flash round would be like a what crimped is the word, a yeah. crimped round with a charge inside. And that one shoots, and there's no projectile. I'm really challenged whether they ever see. I doubt sometimes they have these where you can do both, but that's the clay uh, uh, material. But usually, 99% of the time when we shot a flash round, it was the crimp thing, and you don't see inside the cylinder. Okay. So you're the camera, and I'm not pointing where you can see it. I'm off a little bit, and all you see is the flash. Do you know what would happen if you shot one of these? Have you ever had experience with that? Nothing. Nothing happens with them? There's no charge in them. This is this this Can indicates. The right. Well, sometimes they have the pin to create something. I'm, I'm just saying. When I look at this, when I go like this. Now, by the way, there could be a charge in there, and that charge and those BBs could come out. I don't know. I, I don't know enough about it to know whether this rattling indicates that it's an empty, a, a cold round. That's obviously a cold round because that's where the gunpowder would be in here. Mm -hmm. That's a cold round. This, I'm assuming, is a cold round, because they go like this to tell themselves it's a cold round. I believe, please don't take my word for it. I'm, Just in your experience. I'm a father of six children, pretty much. That's all I do these days. My experience is those are both cold rounds. Okay. And I was told by Halls that when they took the gun away and looked at them, every round inside the gun was a cold round, except the one round it was not only a hot round. It was a live round with a bullet. If you're telling me that that's what came out of his shoulder, there's something really, really scary going on here. Well, and I think that's what something she was trying to bad. ask is if, if any time, well, you said these are cold ones, but the ones that are not cold, the quarter, right? Those they have the crimp head. They have. Yeah. Have you ever seen anything like that ever come out on set? No, it's not possible. Not possible. Okay. Yeah, they don't have a head. They, they, they don't have a, they, there's no projector. There's no projector. Okay. So then, and these shouldn't... Somebody put a live bullet in the gun. Okay. They shouldn't separate or do that either. No. Okay. Separate, I mean, no problem. Like that shouldn't come out either when it, if it, it does. If you did a flash sure. round, that wouldn't be there. Okay. This is a cosmetic round only. Right. I point the gun, that's in the cylinder. When we shoot the gun, 99% of the time, it's a flash round that you don't see the cylinder. You're the camera, and I'm slightly off, so you don't see the cylinder. <laughs> I'm sorry, we keep having you explain that, but it's just because there's different rounds. Right. I'm saying this is a cosmetic round, to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. And if there is, another question for you is, is there a cosmetic round? That, I mean, is there a flash round that has the head, which I believe they have, where you could shoot into the gun, meaning... If the director wants you to aim the gun at the camera, they put a loose side screen up there, and I shoot the gun at you, you can see the bullets inside there, or they can go do that with a computer. Mm -hmm. But if I put the thing toward you and then shoot, they'll have a round that has this on there that'll explode. But again, I've been told that is a clay material or something that just dissolves on explosion. Mm -hmm. No projectile comes out. On a flash round, on a flash round that blows up, that you shoot on camera, Quarter, half, full. There is no projectile unless some material is stuck in the barrel of the gun. Okay. And I thought for sure what happened was, did they not check there was a, a, a stone or whatever? Now, again, I am speechless. 
We're here shooting. Everything was going fine. Joel is my friend. I'm one of the producers on this movie. Mm -hmm. We've developed this movie together for three years. I left my wife and six kids in New York to come here for a month to shoot this movie. And I'm the one that shot the gun today that had a live bullet go through that woman's body and into his body. And I need to know, how did that happen? Where did that bullet come from? Where did a lot, there's, there are no live rounds in her kid, I'm told. Yeah. Everybody was sitting around waiting for me to come here with all the sheriffs and all the people, the people that were there waiting for us to get ready to come and uh, do this with you. But they were, all they did was talk about that. But it's speculation of like, in her kit, she doesn't have a lot of rounds. And, and that's what we were told. That's what we asked her. She said, there is no live rounds, not even in her kit, on set, anywhere. So For that very reason. we want to know the same question, too. Yeah, how, if there's not supposed to be any live rounds on set, then it comes down how to and who possible manufacturer defect for them. That a cosmetic round shot the this projectile through them? Is that possible? Did you find out? I don't know. It's possible. Oh, it is. They told you that mechanically that that's possible. Yes. Yeah. So sometimes there is a charge in the end of not intentionally, but a mistake. Today I sit here, and whether it was a misfiring theatrical round or a libel. I shot this woman with a gun today. Yeah, it doesn't feel so good, you know. Come on. I, I can imagine that would not feel good. I feel really bad. You know, it's like I don't, I mean, everything was going great. The only problem we had was when these six guys wanted to quit. And there, I don't know the, the jargon, but there, uh, uh, you know, a union rep or whatever in the New Mexico contract, different contracts in different states. The person that was in charge of these people had a kind of a pipeline, a lot of shooting going on, a lot of movie, TV work in uh, Albuquerque, Santa Fe. The person that was their head person was told, told them, don't strike. It's not, again, we want we don't want to cripple the indie business and put all of our employees out of work. Our indie contract is, is, is set for now. You have a contract you're under. Now we can renegotiate that contract, which no doubt they will. Uh, but in the meantime, you have a contract that you agree to. And those men came, I'm not criticizing them, they came under a contract which they knew what it was, they reported to work, and then halfway through the the uh, the uh, shooting, they left, they, they walked off. And I don't, you know, when he said to me, well, my guys are sleeping in my car, the ADs and the producers said to me, well, they're, they're uh, you know, they're, they're, they're all of a sudden complaining about a contract they've been working on it for quite a while. And, uh, and some days we wrap, and they have they shoot nights. Those are tough. The men, the women, they have to go back to their homes and maybe Albuquerque and drive an hour. It's three o'clock in the morning, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we try to put the night shooting on the weekend, so when you wake up the following day, you're off. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, um, and then some days we wrap the theory. The day before they walked up the job, we wrapped at five forty-five in the afternoon. It's a very reasonable day. <laughs> it's a very easy day. So, you know, six o'clock. Because I'm driving away with them, and I waved to that guy. The guy said, I want to talk to you, the heavy set guy. Yeah. And I'm leaving. I said, I'll see you tomorrow. And I left. Because I want to get, get home. Right. I want to go call my kids before they go to bed in New York. And uh, the um, uh, yesterday, when I was driving, when I saw him, the sun was still out. We didn't shoot a day. Like, usually we shoot till we lose the light. Mm -hmm. That's why we're here, to shoot in New Mexico. Yeah. New Mexico is the star uh, the of the movie. Yeah. Okay. So do you, in your opinion, feel that this could have been an accident? Or do you... I want to believe that... Do, do, well, let me ask you this, because I don't know anything about this, because it was, it was such mayhem when this happened. Mm -hmm. Everybody was sick that this happened, because we didn't know. No, no one imagined. Everyone thought she was hit by wadding or something got burned. <laughs> No one presumed she was shot with a bullet. Any projectile went through her body. That's no, no one even considered that that wasn't possible. So the question is, the cartridge that came out, the cartridge of when they got the thing fired. Have you got that? No. So we have to send that. We don't analyze that stuff. We collect it, but then we send it to lab. But it was analyze. collected. You have. It will be. Right. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Is that to me? I'm like I'm wondering, what was that? What was in that? The measurement. I don't know anything about that. What, what are they? What ballistics? How can they measure what was in that? Mm -hmm. How much of it? 
And that's that'll all be done at the lab. Yeah, I, I don't know. All I knew was the gun went off. She hit the floor. He hit the floor. He started screaming. He was in a lot of pain. She went into shock. She went. Into, she didn't talk. Right. Her eyes are rolling back in her head, and uh, blah blah blah, and uh, her bad. And everybody starts getting really, and then they start doing CPR, and putting eye, and everybody gets really panicky. And then people start wondering, you know, what did something we assumed because the wadding can burn you, there's material that can come out under vests very rarely that could burn you. But remember, that often doesn't happen because there's no way to cold gun on the rehearsal. Mm. By the time you leave, if the wadding comes out and it hits somebody, they're 20 feet away from you in a gunfight, the crew is away. You're not shooting anybody near the crew. And my point is that when this and when she went down, I thought, what was stuck? We all said the same thing. What was stuck in the barrel? Was something left? They didn't clean the barrel, which we, they always do, always. And was there a rock or something that went, that went through her body? I didn't know about the passing through her body. I know she was hit. I didn't know where, and I don't know what to what extent. But we all presumed as we're sitting outside, bullshitting for the last two hours while this went on, the aftermath, we assumed something was lodged in the barrel, was a projectile that went into her body. Now, when you tell me that's what came out of Joel's shoulder, that's a faulty round, which I've never heard of that before. Okay. Never. I've never heard of a, of a theatrical flash round that was loaded into a gun that had a projectile that misfired, and that projectile came out that was it was a lethal round. Normally, what you're going to have a round that has this on it, it's the material that disintegrates when you fire the gun. Because mm. if you take a flash round with gunpowder in it, whether it's a quarter, half, or full load, and you put a real bullet on, that's called a bullet. That's not a movie bullet. That's a bullet. Yeah. How did that happen? I mean, I'm dying. To, I'm the person that fired the gun. I'm dying to find out how that happened. How did that bullet that caused it end up in her kit? And and again, we're not going to know if it was manufacturer issues or someone did bring a live round until it's been tested and we look at the whole uh, casing and projectile of it. So, is there anybody on set that you would think want want to? Uh, cause a disturbance in them filming or have any issues with anybody on set, minus what happened, if you don't think... No, in the movie business, business, there are always some whiny people. Okay. But not so much so that they want to shoot somebody. So nothing I've never heard of anything like this in my lifetime, ever. I've made 75 movies. So in the past couple of weeks that you've been on set, there's nobody really... There's no one I would imagine would be capable of doing something like this. Nothing that out of the ordinary... But again, I think it's a critical point to me, which is, if this is a flash round, if there's a flash round, and you have a piece here, this piece has to be a certain type of which if you want, as I've told you before, if you want the shot to go off and see that the cylinder cosmetically has a, has a round in there, this is not up the thing that was in Joel's shoulder. But, I, and then I want to come back to this. You said that when the gun went off, you experienced no kick. Yeah, there was no recoil. There was no recoil that I, that I remember. Okay. I mean, literally, I'm holding the gun, and, and, and let me slowly, slowly pull, turn, cock, bang. And as soon as I cock it, bang! And I jump, because, I mean, you obviously, that's the last thing you think is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Everything has been done. Every breath we take is to, is to, is to obviate that possibility. And the gun went off, and... Uh, all I can think of, as I, keep, as I keep saying, is that I've never heard of a flash round that had a bullet on top, that had a projectile similar to what came out of Joel's show. I've never heard of that in my life, ever. Never, 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 never. Flash rounds, never, flash rounds normally have the crimping. Mm -hmm. If there's a head on there, it's made of a special material. And in this scene, you were to look down the barrel of the gun and shoot. Um, you have to ask them that, by the way. You have to ask, uh, well, both of us were in the hospital now. But was it their intention? Because when I was given the gun, I'm assuming it's a cold gun with nothing in it. When it goes to the time to shoot, are they going to see in the barrel that there's a gun there? Very often what they'll do is they'll have you put the cosmetic rounds and I'll draw the gun up, I'll aim it, they cut. And cinematically, they'll cut to the other guy going like this. Then they'll cut back to me with the flash round with no projectile. But what I'm saying to you is a... Theatrical round, a flash round with a bullet head. I've never heard of that in my life ever. 
Never, never, never. But that's a bullet. Less of a charge, but that's a bullet. I don't know what to say. I've never heard of this in my life. What's your date of birth, April 3rd, 1958. Do we have, um, is there someone that we can contact if we have other questions for you? My name is Jonah. Jonah J. J O N A H. His last name is Foxman. They told me that you wanted this, correct? Uh, J O N J O N A H Foxman F O X M A N. We have one more here. Okay. Uh, what do I have to do? Uh, you can go wherever. Well, let me ask you this. Originally, so this is a very complicated, I mean, you're honest compared to what happened to them, but my wife and my whole family were scared. Mm -hmm. And on Saturday, my daughter was going to be in the movie. And a little part of my daughter. The eight year old. Oh, she was so excited to come. And now the question is Joel's not going to go back to work for a while. Right. I doubt he'll be back to work in a week or two at that. Who knows what they're going to do? They're going to get the shit suit out of them. He, I mean, I think his was a shoulder. He might, you know, I don't know. It's up to him how he feels and stuff on. on but I'm, sure, I'm sure that there are so many insurance issues for them. There's going to probably be a halt. There's a lot of trouble. Insurance-wise and, 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 and uh, uh, civil action-wise. What I'm saying is, is, I told them I would stay here tomorrow. My family's not going to come now. Mm -hmm. gonna, I, I begged them to come, and my wife wants to cancel the trip. She says it takes it's just a weird energy. I told the producers that I would stay tomorrow in case anybody else, their insurance investigators, anybody, their lawyers wanted to talk to me. I'll make myself. And then Saturday, I was going to fly home to New York. I just wait for them to tell me what to do. Did you need me to stay here beyond Saturday? I, I will do whatever you tell me to do. Okay, so I think so. What, what we need to do is we're going to go and process the scene. If there's any else that comes up um, and that we need to contact you, you said you'll be here till Saturday? Or you as of now, fly? Oh, no, as of now, I'm going to stay tomorrow to make okay. myself available to the insurance investigators and their return, the production's attorneys. Yeah. To make myself available. They told me they're not sure they need to talk to me. I'm going to stay tomorrow and get on a plane Saturday to go home, and God knows what come back, it might be months. Okay. So I we can contact you. Yeah. Yeah. As long as we have this number, he's not going to change it. Right. Number, if, knowing what I'm trying to say is that I'm going to leave You're on okay. Saturday unless you tell me not to. You're okay. Totally. If you tell me to come back in, I'm going to do whatever you tell me to do. But about, but I, my wife wanted me to come home. Yeah. yeah. So as long as we have a way of contacting you is, no, no. is what we need to do to get a hold of you. Okay. But I think you... Unless tomorrow you hear something different from us, because right now we're going to go. We'll interview we'll you tomorrow. I'll come here right away. Okay. Yes. Tell me what you What's want. What's your work though? Um, I know. Or your office, sorry. That one I uh, don't know. I don't 96. use it. Okay. Well, so 2850. Uh, 49 know 2050. This is work cell. I'll just. So the two of you are not best friends, and you go bowling together and go to movies together now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, my so this is my card. Uh, that's I put her name on the back of that one. But my um, office is. How do you prefer the office? Oh, let me put my because mine's a different plus size. Yeah, I don't. Um, my desk phone has issues, so I use my work cell phone all the time, and that's usually the best way to get a cell phone picture. And then if I'm not at my desk either. But so if I don't hear from you otherwise, I mean, I'll come in tomorrow if you yeah. prefer, but if I don't hear from you otherwise, as of now, I intend to go home on Saturday. So, yeah, and, and that's fine, because right now, we still have other interviews to do. we got to go to the scene, process it. The, the processing at the lab might take longer, so you might even not hear from if 
And then you do. Years back right now. So our investigation is remotely. If it comes to it, we will figure it out at that point. But right now, now as of right now, you better listen to your wife and go home. (laughs) Okay. Are we ready for... uh, I do have some very unfortunate news to tell you. What? Um, She didn't make it. Yeah. So, Joel's still at the hospital. But the other person involved didn't make it. Sorry. I just didn't want you to hear it outside of here. Is there something we could do for you? Um, that was that Jonah. What? Jonah is the one that's the one. Um, yeah, I don't know if can. Okay, would so you want Jonah in here with you? You want to, what do you want to do? Do you want to make a call? You can get one. Are you guys needing a ride? Or are you comfortable? I think it's up there, maybe. Are you comfortable driving, though? I want to go call my wife. Of course. We could give you a ride. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can I get you more water or anything? No, so, Sid, you guys have a few minutes in here? I want to go call my wife. 